In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a drum transplant in Reaper. And I've been using Reaper for about 10 years now. But if you're an Apple Logic user or some other DAW user, then the same concepts may apply to you. It's just a matter of how those DAWs function as far as sound replacing and working with samples and all kinds of different stuff. So what I'm going to show you here is this is actually a drum track that was recorded in the Superior Drummer and the files were exported down into WAV files. So the drums already sound pretty good. Let's just say, for example, that we want to augment the snare sound, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this track. So it's going to give me two of the same tracks. So I can rename this to snare top sample. And from here, I'm going to double click on the track. So it's going to highlight the whole track. And that's very important if you have the track split up in the different regions, it would select all the regions at once. And now I can hit the D key. And it's going to bring up a dynamic split option. Okay. So I'm going to make this to where none of the boxes are selected except for the at the transients box. And then I'm going to go down here and set transient sensitivity. So let me show you what this does here. And so for example, we have a little snare fill. And I want to go in and adjust the threshold to where I know that all the snares are going to be chosen. So we got that snare hit, that snare hit, that snare hit, and so forth. But it's not choosing the little blips of audio in between. Okay, so that's very important. Now I do have the display threshold and media items while this window is open. Check marks, we can't see the lines above and below. This is just going to help us see all the transients we have available. If there's any ghost notes in here, you may want to bring that down just so we can capture everything. Like, for example, if we want to capture these little hits in there, then that's something we could do. But for the most part, those are simply just bleed from the other microphones and we don't need to capture those. So before I split this up, I'm actually going to go to item settings and choose loop item source and just uncheck that. If I go in here and I make a split. So that way, if I start inserting a sample onto here, it's not going to keep looping the sample over and over. So now that we have all the snare hits selected, we can go in here. We can just double check. It's like, yeah, that looks good. I'm just holding down shift and using my mouse wheel, making sure they're all selected in there. And this is going to be more important if you're dealing with live drums. Because with live drums, you get a lot of bleed, you get a lot of, you know, anomalies in there that may not be what you want, but we're just making sure we're capturing everything. So we're going to go ahead and hit split and it's going to split all the regions here. Now, this is not going to be a perfect process. I'm going to have to go in and do some uh, manual editing, but for the most part, this will be pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and double click the track so it highlights all the regions that I've made a split of. I'm actually going to go to view and then media explorer. And I have a whole folder of 1000 drum hits. And in this window, I am going to choose autoplay, but I'm going to deselect the repeat symbol. So that way it just doesn't keep repeating over and over and over. I'm going to click on the IO and just make sure it's going out the output that I want, which is 23 and 24. So that is fine for that. And let's just choose the first one and see what it sounds like. Okay, choose the second one. Third one. Sixth. So let's go and find something that's really drastic sounding. All right, so I'm going to choose snares 44 and I'm going to right click. And I'm actually going to insert as take in selected items. So let's just see what happens if we choose this option here. Okay, you can see that we didn't have the loop keep repeating. So this is where the loop stops and we're just coming on the hits. So we're gonna hit Command L, which is going to hide the first take and we're gonna just see the second take. And this just allows us to go back and, and choose different takes if we need to. But for now, we are just gonna to totally resample everything. All right, so let's listen to what this sounds like if I 
just kind of blend in the current sample. All right, let's listen to all the drums together. All right, so you can still hear the original snare in there, but the sample is just kind of adding another dimension to the overall sound. That may be what you want. You can do this for like 808 breakdowns if you get to a bridge and you really want to hear like a 808 kick drum sound on the drums in a certain section, then we can totally go and do that, right? So for example, let's go to our bridge section and let's actually do that. This might be kind of fun. So we're going to duplicate our kick track and let's rename this kick in sample and let's just split the track from here. And let's go to here. Okay, so we're only going to adjust this one little section right here. Then we can mute the other regions because we're only going to work with this one area. So let's go ahead and hit D and transient sensitivity. And let's make sure that we're only selecting the kicks. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and hit split and now select all these, go to properties, take off the loop source. And let's actually go back to another folder here. Now, I may not even have an 808 in here, but let's just find something that works. Let's shoot for that one. So let's right click, insert as a take. And there we go. We can bring down the volume of these. And let's listen to this kick sample. Uh, you can have a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. So it's just a few examples of what you can do here in Reaper to replace certain kicks or replace everything. Or let's just say you want to go through different sections and put a kick drum here and a kick drum there. You can totally do that. Uh, if you want to mess around with some different kick sounds, we can actually go in. Let's choose another one. Okay, let's do that one. Let's do the same thing. Let's insert this as a take. Okay, at this point we can hit Shift and T and that's going to scroll through the different takes that we have. So let's listen to what we have on this kick. Mm. Oh yeah. Let's change it to a different one. And here's back to the original. Okay. So it's pretty cool. So if you get confused along the way here, just go back and watch my process just to see the steps that you have to take to even get to this point. So we have to make sure we select the track, we right click and go to item settings, uncheck the loop item source. So that way any new samples we add is not gonna keep looping over and over and over. And then we just make our selection go to view media explorer then you can go in and choose a sample now if you don't have any samples at all you may just want to google like drum samples and see what kind of packs there are out there you can find some free ones i'm sure and there's all kinds of different options now if you happen to own tune track easy drummer or superior drummer you can do you can use midi to actually replace drums as well so let me go ahead and show you how we do that. All right, so since we've already done the process of splitting a track, we may not have to do that again, but let's just go through it just for example's sake. And let's replace the drums 
in this chorus right here. Okay. So you gonna make sure my grid is on and make sure my cursor is going right on the grid. We're going to separate this and then we're going to separate to the turnaround. So we're just going to mess around with splitting up the kick drum right here in the chorus. So we're going to make sure we right click, go to item settings, take off the loop item source. That's very important. Let's do that first. And then we're going to hit D and we're going to actually create a chromatic MIDI item from slices. Okay. So check this out. We want to make sure we first are choosing our threshold. So we're just choosing the actual kicks and not the snare bleed that you see right there. And that works for that. So we're going to hit split. And now you can see the actual MIDI items underneath, which is really cool. Okay, so let's double click on the MIDI and let's select all by doing command A, right click. We're going to go to event properties. Now we're going to select an actual note. Let's choose C sharp two and hit apply. And now they're all the same notes. And now we're going to go in and choose easy drummer, which I use a lot. And if you don't have this program, it's perfectly fine. There's lots of other ways to do this, but let's go and look at the kick and let's figure out what note is actually triggering. Uh, so we're going to look at the details and the hit is actually C1. So let's go back and make sure all these notes are selected. We're going to right click event properties and let's go and choose C1 for our hit. Okay. Which is this one right here. We're going to hit apply and note. So now let's just see what happens if we pull up easy drummer. Let's go ahead and render this track. We're just going to make it mono. Okay, there we go. Let's listen to it. Okay, pretty cool, huh? So now we've used MIDI to actually change the sounds. If you already have Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer, then you can do that. But that's just another way of going in, making a note, and then changing the actual sound using MIDI. So this video isn't meant to be exhaustive, but I did want to show you the options that were available as far as replacing drums. So I may come out with a more extensive course on this in the future, but for now, these are the basics of taking a track, splitting the transients up, and then just sound replacing the drums to whatever you want. So thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But in the meantime, I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.